Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Today I've been doing a bit of tidying up, a bit of reorganizing. The fish room is basically a massive mess. So as you can see, fish boxes, I've had lots of deliveries and things like that recently. But I've also found lots of random things like buckets of gravel I didn't know I had, fish tanks I've forgotten I had, lights that I didn't remember buying. So that's all good, but I got all these were piled, in fact, let me show you where. All those boxes were piled up there, uh, up to about here. So I couldn't actually see this HMA filter here. Uh, and look at the state of that. That is one ugly ass filter. That is well in need of a change. So normally I have a reminder on one of my apps to remind me to change the filters. I like to change them every six months. Um, in fact, I like to change the first stage of the filter every three months because that makes them go a bit longer. But much like an alarm clock, this is the maintenance version of that alarm clock where I kept it in snooze. Yeah, I'll do that next week. Oh yeah, I'll do that next week. So I'm probably a good couple of months overdue. So we're going to change the filters of my HMA filter and explain a little bit about what they are because everyone keeps asking me what's my water change system, how does it work? So let's go and have a look. This is us in the fish room. This is my HMA filter. HMA stands for Heavy Metal Axe. Um, you'll hear them talked about as things like carbon block filters, all that sort of stuff. Um, but here in the UK, or certainly I call them HMA filters. This is a three stage HMA. And the first stage is a sediment filter. So you have a sediment filter, so gunk removal. It's basically just really finely packed floss. And then you have two carbon filters, a uh, carbon block and carbon granules. And what that does is it removes all the nasties. So heavy metal acts, obviously it's going to remove any heavy metals in your water, but primarily I use this so I don't have to worry about the chlorinators. So this will remove chlorine, it will remove chloramines. Uh, it doesn't alter the water chemistry whatsoever. So the pH stays the same. It doesn't alter the hardness, the softness same thing so it keeps all your parameters as you would expect but it just means you don't need to spend a fortune on the chlorinators over time and i can use this as part of my drip system so the way i have this plumbed in in my garage is up here you'll see these two lines here and um, a lot running along the roof that's my water feed lines what they do is they come all the way across to here and into these valves here so this is called a thermostatic mixer valve so what we've got is hot water and cold water come in so hot water comes in this side cold water comes in this side i can set this valve so as it spits out water here at whatever temperature i want i generally only use this if i'm filling up a tank um, fresh so most of my changing is done with cold water but if I was, for instance, if this was a brand new tank and it was empty, rather than filling it up with cold water and waiting for a heater to heat it up, I would set this mixer valve to 25 degrees or whatever it is and just dump the water in there as fast as I could. And it's a lot more economical and faster that way. Um, but I've got this set so it has a bypass with cold which just comes down here, feeds through this. I used to have a hose attached here so as I could do things like wash the dogs with the hose. Um, but I got rid of that feeds into here and then goes through the HMA filter, one, two, three stages and out here. Here I've got a bit of a, a break out here which then runs this water line. I don't know if you can see this. One runs this water line to all my tanks. So it goes to this side, goes to that side, goes along and then each tank has a little drop down into the tank with a drip, a drip tip on the end which just drips water in and then they overflow through these things here into the drain and away to the drain. So I never have to worry about doing water changes. Um, if I can't be bothered, just forget. It doesn't matter, it's being done automatically. I still do come in and do large water changes every now and again, because I think that is important, but don't have to. So another variable you might see on different types of filter is the cartridge size. So these are all cartridges which hold the filters. Um, so for instance, this, goes in here if you have uh, these are 10 inch cartridges if you have a 20 inch cartridge it basically means you can increase the water flow through it so I like to keep the water flow at kind of around four liters per minute because that means that it takes care of chloramines chlorine anything that I want to if I run it a bit faster it doesn't catch all the chloramines um, but basically the slower you run it the better it is or the more filtered it is but the bigger the cartridge the faster you can run it Changing these cartridges is fairly straightforward and 
it doesn't take a long time, but I've yet to do it without making quite a mess of water anyway. But basically, turn all the water off. So in my system, that's already off. Turn off the cold water. That means no more water's coming through. I then let a little bit of water bleed out of the system so there's nothing back pressure. Um, this is my normal fill line that if I do want to fill something up, I've just got this on the end of the system. So I just make sure that there's nothing coming out of this with a little tap. And then they come with a wrench like this. So you basically just slide on the wrench. Lefty Lucy. Get that undone. And this is where it would be good to have a sink. A little bit of sludge in the bottom of it, usually, if I leave it too long. But look at that in comparison to that. So that's six months without being changed. And that's our drinking water supply. That's what we'll happily drink without filtering it. Yeah, I clean it from a fish. But as you can see, permeating all the way through. Um, but it kind of shows you a little bit how the filter works. So the water comes in here unfiltered, goes down through this, which is, like I say, it's just really a really tightly packed um, floss, if you like. And then out through it, into the next chamber, and into the next chamber. So we'll just repeat that and change all these filters. So next is one of the carbon filters. And I've seen people do videos of this before where they, they're using all kinds of tools to tighten these up. I've never had a leak with this. Is, I've, got, I've got two of these filters, one upstairs and one in here. I've never had a leak tightening it more than hand tightness. So next one was the carbon block. Again, really rank. Last but not least, carbon granules. So there you go, have a look at that. Absolutely disgusting. Um, but think how nice and happy the fish will be. So then it's really just a case of swapping all over. So getting them out. So for instance, this one, you just drop it in like that. Screw it back in. Get them all hand tight and get them over. Next one was the block. One other thing I always like to do is check the O-rings because like I said earlier when they do go wrong that's when you start to get leaks. But they all look quite good. I did change them all about a year ago so I'm expecting them to last for quite a while. And then carbon granules. Now, I'm not going to go into the specifics of each of these because you can get all different types of um, filter cartridges which will offer various different rates of flow and different contaminants that they'll remove and all that kind of stuff. If you want to know more about that, by all means drop me a link in the comments or drop me a question in the comments and I'll answer them as best I can or join my Facebook group and we'll talk about it there. I will put links to all the things that I use in the description, so check them out there. And then just get your wrench righty tighty. Make sure they're all tight enough. Turn the water back on. You'll see it starting to fill up. You'll see a little bit of debris floating around in there. So what we'll do is we'll run the end of this system just into the tap for a couple of minutes. So the way they've got this set up, like I say, I've got drip tips in all the tanks that are drilled. Um, the water flows into them and then eventually comes out to the, an end hose like this. And this is the hose that I use as a fill line for any other tanks that I want to be able to do water changes or fill on. So whenever I change stuff over, I just stick this in the drain and run it for a couple of minutes because sometimes the water can be a bit yucky. I'll take that out just now. I just use these little and um, taps like this. I 
I have these set at various places throughout the city. I did tell you you get wet every now and again. So, when you first turn it back on, it might go a bit wild and splatter everywhere. Um, but what I was trying to say there was, I have these taps set at various stages throughout the system so I can take banks of tanks off the system if I want to, if I want to drain something down or whatever. Should we just move on and pretend that didn't happen? Anyway, we let this run for a couple of minutes. It's now running perfectly clear, happy with that. I can turn off the tap. Pretend that I'm not soaked. And we're done. I don't need to think about it for another six months, so I'll set my reminder in my calendar. Um, and we're kind of good to go. So, there we go. Filter all changed. Everything's back up and running, and the clearing out operation has completed as well. Only the more eagle-eyed of the viewers will be able to tell that under here actually got space, and everything's organised. So we've got filter media, um, filter equipment, hardscaping stuff, general stuff, more stuff, filters, buckets, substrate, all under there, everything's all tidied away up there as well. I have to say, all done completely by me, no help whatsoever from anyone, and yeah, looks much better. Anyway, next task is going to be this tank here. I'm going to drill this and get it onto the auto water change system. So if you haven't already, click that subscribe button and you'll see when that video comes out. Um, I'm going to be lazy and do it with the fish in, or the water in anyway, and get that plumbed in. And then we can get that one set up. I can order a new tank for here and we should be good to go. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, click that subscribe button and we'll see you next time. Bye.